Hi everybody, my name is Jens Larsen. Usually when I talk about what scale to use over a chord, I'll tell you to look at the key, I'll tell you to look at the song and the chord progression to understand what the chord is doing there and then make the choice of scale out of that. And of course that is important, you want to always see a chord in a context and understand what it's doing there. But at the same time, you also want to improvise with the different sounds that you use on the chords, not just uh, a specific set of notes that fits in this context. That's really also a part of jazz. So in this video I'm going to take a C major 7 chord and then I'm going to go over some of the different scale options you have for that chord. So that's going to range from just the very normal ones and also into some more exotic, maybe less familiar ones. And it could be that there's going to be some stuff you're not really using now and you want to add to your vocabulary. So you can start with working on it from here. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, about improvising, understanding chord progressions and finding interesting arpeggios to use in your solos, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then press the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. What I'm going to do is I'm going to play a short example using that scale over a background on a C major 7 shell voicing like this, just so you have an idea about what it sounds like. Then I'm going to talk about what notes are in the scale and what kind of extensions uh, that gives us on the chord. I'm also going to talk a little bit about some of the arpeggios that I like to use when I'm playing with this sound and how I approach the improvisation just loosely. Of course, the first scale that we need to talk about is the major scale, so C major over C major 7. And um, you probably already know this, otherwise you're not checking out the video anyway, but at the same time, it is the most common scale you want to come across on a major 7 chord, and uh, you do want to be able to play with it, even though in my uh, improvisation here, I didn't really use sort of the defining note that much, because in this case, the note that's going to set this scale apart from the other ones is the fact that we have an F in there. And um, that's not really a note we can sort of lean on that much on the chord because it doesn't really fit with it that well. It sounds like this if we stay on it. And as soon as you start playing uh, melodies with it, if you're not just using it as a passing note going from uh, between two chord notes, then most of the time it's going to sound like you're actually playing another chord on top of the C major 7. And in terms of what you use when you're playing this, I think I have a lot of videos on different things. Uh, probably the things that I use the most would be just the arpeggio. And uh, so the C major 7 arpeggio and also uh, E minor pentatonic is something that I really like to mess around with because it gives me these these quarter arpeggios that I like to use a lot and of course also E minor 7 arpeggio is something that's very useful to check out with that. And for the rest, I mean, there are a lot of melodies that have uh, that use a major scale, so you can also just borrow from those and different players will have different options in there. The second sound is the Lydian sound, and that's the same as playing G major over a C major 7 chord, and that gives us a uh, C major 7 with a 9 and a sharp 11, which is sort of the defining note in this case, and then a 13. So really the only thing that's changing is that we have a sharp 11 instead of a normal 11, and then in fact a note that we can sustain on, the, on top of the chord. So that's also what you're using, so when you're improvising with this, you probably want to emphasize that note to get the sound out of the scale. What I did with this was mostly I'm playing, of course still playing just some C major 7 arpeggio material, uh, but to get the sound out on the, uh, of the sharp 11, so this sort of dreamy, very bright major sound here, uh, I tend to use, again, a pentatonic scale, so uh, B minor pentatonic is good for that maybe just because I really like to use the chordal harmony. And uh, another thing that I also like to use a lot is, uh, is triad pairs, because you get this 
sort of shifting triad pairs that sound nice on this uh, sound, and that's the C and the D major triad uh, that I use that as well to sort of come up with some melodic ideas. So this scale sounds a little bit more strange, a little bit more exotic, and it has a few extensions that we're really not as used to. Uh, so the chord that I'm playing here, of course it's a C major 7, but uh, in this sound we actually get a C major 7 with a sharp 9 and a sharp 11. And the scale that um, that, that comes from is an E harmonic minor scale, where we have a C major 7 on the 6th degree. Uh, so we have this scale. and. Um, that means we have the C major 7, we still just have a straight C major 7, but we do have a sharp 9 and a sharp 11 as extensions on it, and then also a 13. And um, the way this is, this sound sort of is often described is to have two triads on top of each other. Uh, so we have sort of a B major triad, and that's on top of a C major triad, so we have those two together. If you play it on guitar, usually you'll play, you'll leave out the G on the... On the C, and then you have these five notes. Uh, when I'm playing on this, I think I really do tend to rely heavily on using the B major triad. But of course, I also will use trying to use some of the structures to kind of have both. So, um, so this E minor major is a, is a good one to use. And also, since we anyway have a chord that's described as a triad pair, uh, we can use that triad pair as well. It's also something that I do quite a lot, and also did, just did in the solo. What you can also hear in the solo is that I almost tend to treat, um, and that maybe has a little bit to do with the context also, because the comping doesn't really have this sound in there, but um, I tend to treat the, the D sharp and the F sharp as notes that I, uh, I resolve a bit. So I do kind of work with it. especially with the triad pairs, as, as something that's completely home and something that's kind of far away. And then try and think from, from, from that when I'm making melodies so that I'll play something that I sort of sounds like a sort of tension. And then resolve it by just playing something really standard C major. So this is the Lydian augmented sound, which is probably one of my favorite uh, sounds to sort of throw in there as a surprise. And uh, Lydian augmented is the same as playing A melodic minor on a C major 7 chord. And what you get here is that then, because we have this scale, uh, we don't have a straight C major 7 anymore because the C major 7 that's in here is with a sharp 5. And uh, for the rest, the extensions are uh, pretty straight ahead, so they're Lydian, so that's going to be a 9. Sharp 11 and 13. Uh, and this is something I use quite a lot because the sharp 5 is, is sort of a very distinct with, the, with this major 7 sharp 5 sound. Uh, it's just sort of a beautiful but still, uh, if not disturbing, but at least interesting and rich uh, sound that, that's nice to have there, especially when you're coming out of a cadence because you're then sort of you have a melody that's really pointing towards some sort of resolution. And if you then throw in this sound, then it's resolving, but it's not resolving in the way that you would expect it to. That's sort of a little bit how I use this sound a lot. And um, when I'm playing this, so let's see, I used um, I used a pentatonic scale that I already made a lesson on, uh, but I think when the, this video comes out, it didn't actually uh, publish yet. It's going to be coming a few days later. So if you're watching this on Monday, then on Thursday the lesson on, about this pentatonic scale. <laughs> will come out. Uh, it's a great sort of pentatonic scale for, for that kind of sound. It really spells out like C major 7 with a sharp 11 and a sharp 5. So that's this scale. 
um, and there's a lesson on that later. And then I'm also using, well, a lot of the different things that I always use a lot when I'm using melodic minor. Uh, I really like the, the dominant chords with a sharp five. So in this case, I'm using a G sharp seven sharp five arpeggio. Um, let's see what else did I do. I think I used. I might have used the triad pair as well. Uh, because I do do that quite a lot, so have the and the triad pair in this case is going to be uh, on on the D and on the E over a C bass, and that's also something that's nice to just to use to to make some melodies. Um, it is a little bit interesting. Maybe it's a little bit ironic also that. Um, I'm making this video where I'm going over all the different sort of modal sounds of a over a C major chord and and what what is possible there. Um, mainly because I'm also planning to do a video where I talk about how you actually shouldn't learn modes. Um, and maybe that's also. But you can also tell that what I'm doing here is I'm, I didn't really check this out as modes. I'm really referring it back to sort of a parent scale. And then what I'm doing is that I'm really using. Um, structures in my melody, so that's going to be sort of the basic uh, arpeggio, and I just know how to get this chord out of that scale, and I think like that a lot. And the reason why that's useful is, um, and that's also going to be in that video once I get uh, around to making it, is that that's a better skill to have. You don't really want to check out all kind of different modes, you just want to work on your ability to take a scale, and then any chord that you can find in there is something that you can make melodies with and use the arpeggio and, and, and work like that. I think that's just a much more efficient skill to have if you want to uh, improvise not only with uh, over changes but also just with what sounds you have on top of the changes. Uh, and it's going to make it easier to, to conquer or to um, be able to use a lot of different sounds on the scales. But um, I'll, I'll make another video on that and stop uh, ranting about it right now. Let's go to the next example. The augmented scale is of course mostly sort of a theoretical construction uh, because it's a six note scale and it's constructed out of a C augmented and a B augmented triad next to each other here. And um, if I play the scale then uh, that would be something like this. And um, you can tell that I don't really work with it as a scale that much, uh, because I work more with the structures that are in there. Um, though the scale, of course, I think the people that are mostly famous for using this uh, are uh, Alan Holdsworth and Michael Brecker, who make quite a lot of use of it, both of them. And um, the things that you want to use mostly when you're improvising with the scale is going to be the triads that are found in there, because you have sort of triads in major thirds. So in this case you're going to have like a C, an E and an A flat triad. And then you put those on top of the, the C major 7, uh, which can give you, well the sharp 5 is one of them, um, and a sharp 9. And then, But you have the sharp 5 and you also have the perfect 5th in there. And it almost doesn't really make too much sense to think about this as being, uh, to saying that then it's a flat 13. Uh, in this case that's more sort of in, in a tonal context. Uh, and now we're in the amount of scales and the solo scales where um, it, yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to say is this a, an A flat or is it a G sharp or what is the G then and so, so it doesn't really make sense anymore when, when we're into these uh, more uh, atonal things which, is, which there are going to be a few of actually so there's this one um, and uh, what we often forget is that the diminished scale and the whole tone scale are also like this. You can't really uh, get them to make sense when you're writing out so the notes in, in terms of whether they're sharps or flats. But uh, that's also not too important really, uh, because really what you need to do is just you need to listen to what you're playing. And um, in this one, so, so we have the C major triad and the A flat and the E triad. I guess that's 
that's the biggest part of what I make melodies with this. I kind of like the idea that you have a, sort of a, a C bass note and then you have all these triads happening on top of it, so you get like... And then you're, you're sort of shifting those colors around. Um, so that's probably what I use with the most. Uh, of course, since it's symmetrical, then if we have a C major, so we can construct a C major 7 sharp 5 in there, and that means that we can also construct the E major 7 and the A flat major 7 sharp 5. So I think in the solo I played, I used the E major 7 sharp 5 as well. And that will also be something that you can sort of work with when you're soloing. This is probably one of the most complex sounds that I, I know, uh, because this is a Mishang mode, and um, even though it's one of the most complex sounds that I know, I forgot which number mode it is. I think it's two or three, but uh, I'll look it up, and then when I edit the video, I'll make sure to insert the right number. It's also not that important what number it has, uh, because there are not that many Mishang modes that you actually use, uh, where you also refer to them as that. Uh, this is a nine note symmetrical scale. Uh, there are a few ways to think about that. One way that makes it easy to play is to just think of it as being this scale fragment and then just moved up through the octave, so you do C up to E flat and then you start again on E, so E, uh, F sharp G and then A flat, B flat, B. So now I'm just thinking about it as this sort of minor scale fragment that's just played, placed symmetrically uh, on the octave. So the octave split in three. That's one way of looking at it. Another way to explain it is to look at, um, at it as being two augmented scales summed together. Because if you think of this augmented scales as a pair of three triads, so uh, the one that we already talked about would be these, so E, C, and A flat. And then you're adding the ones a half step uh, below that. And that could be then E flat, B, and G. Uh, and in that way, you get the scale as well. Um, so that would be a way of looking at it. Another way to construct it would be to take... Um, so you're taking the... There are like four augmented triads in, in, the, uh, in the 12 notes in the chromatic scale. And um, if you take out one... So in this case, we took out C sharp, F and A. Uh, and then that leaves us with the scale. So that's, that's also a way of, of looking at it. Um, and there are more ways to, it's not something that I've checked out really a lot. Um, I work with it in, in some ways. I think uh, you will hear Holdsworth use this quite a bit. Um, I think he uses it on uh, Letters of Mark, which uh, I've been checking out a bit lately. Uh, because there's like a part in the, which is sort of that type of sound. Sort of the minor major, um, sharp 11 type sound. That, that's really what, what this is. So again, this is completely uh, a theoretical construction. It's not really a tonal thing that you can use. So you just, whenever you use this, you're immediately um, just throwing some sort of uh, weird scale on top of it. And it's, it's not like the stuff that you hear in, in, uh, in a melody, really. Unless you're listening to modern classical music, obviously. So the way I work with this, of course, I didn't really make a lesson on this machine mode before, and uh, maybe that's something I should do. So let me know in a comment if you think that we I should make a lesson on this. Uh, that could be interesting. It is actually a scale sound that I use uh, from time to time, uh, and it is you can do some interesting things with it, even if it is always kind of far out. But really, sometimes you also want to have vocabulary to take you kind of far out. And uh, well, if if you like the kind of sounds that, that Holsworth gets out of it, uh, which I certainly do, then uh, it's worthwhile checking it out. Uh, so the stuff that I'm using in the improvisation here, uh, I am using a little bit this idea to make melodies, and that's just a way of seeing the scale. Uh, 
and, and work around it like that. So that is something I have done when I've checked it out. For the rest, I think I rely mostly on, on sort of the two triad uh, sets. So the, uh, the, the E, C and A flat and the E flat, B and uh, G triads. And then try and mix those up uh, so that you have the... This is a sound that is, if you can talk about it like that, but in a way it is so complex and there are so many notes and different extensions available uh, that um, you kind of need to play a lot of different things or some really uh, complicated chords to get the sound across. Uh, so if we just take, so we of course have like, if we take, take a look at it from C, then it's going to be like C, and then we have a 9, a sharp 9, 3rd, sharp 11, 5, flat 13, or sharp 5, uh, flat 7, a major 7, and a C. Those are the extensions we have. Um, so, of course you can build pretty much any chord you want almost already with that, and you can even just play an improvisation just using uh, what is there and and, and not choose um, alterations that are really colored, like the, the flat 13 and stuff, and then play a melody on the C major 7 that's just going to sound like you're playing, well, major, and or sort of very simple C major. And you can also play stuff that's really far out, so you're really emphasizing uh, notes that you don't really associate with, with this sound at all. So in that way you need to play quite a lot of material to get it, get the sound across and not sound only like the augmented scale um, on top of the major 7 for instance and that is uh, that is interesting to check out maybe but as I said this is something that I maybe could make a lesson on uh, and just give some ideas on how to work on, on this scale and how to use it uh, so you can always let me know in the comments if that's something that I should uh, get into Using the E harmonic major scale to play over C major 7, I thought that was uh, interesting. It's actually not a scale that I ever used before I made this video, so it was just something I came across when I was sort of thinking about what um, what scales would have a C major 7. And really that, that's how, maybe that's also interesting because of course how do you find all these uh, these chords and all these scales and put it together. So the way I think about this is I'll look at the type of chord, so the basic type of chord, uh, in this case would be a major 7. And then I'm just going to think about, uh, well, where can you find that, and, and where are they found? So usually a major seven is going to be found on the uh, on the root, on the uh, fourth degree of a major scale. Those are sort of the most common places. And in a minor scale, it might also be on the flat three and on the flat six. Um, and then in this case, also actually you have a major scale, so a harmonic major scale, where you have a uh, a major seven. In this case, so there's a major seven sharp five on um, on the on the flat six. So if I play an E harmonic major scale, so I hardly ever use a harmonic major to be honest, but um, you can do some interesting stuff with it. And maybe I actually might want to add this one to my vocabulary because it's a nice sum of two other options. Uh, so so that'll be this. This is the E harmonic major scale, and um, the C major 7 that we have in here is then a C major 7 with a sharp 5 and then for the rest we have the sharp 9 uh, and we have uh, the sharp 11 and, uh, and, and a normal 13. So those are the sort of the extensions that we have in the scale and um, I guess so the combination of the two it's a little bit like taking um, taking the Lydian augmented sound, which I really like already, which is A melodic minor, and then um, if you have A melodic minor sharp 11, then that's actually a harmonic major scale, so, and that's what we get here. And then it's, a, it's combining the, um, the A melodic minor and the E harmonic minor together, and then you get this scale. That's also a way of, of looking at it. Uh, so those are the sounds you get, so you get the, the sharp 5 and the sharp 11, and you get the sharp 9 as well. Uh, and that is that's a nice sound to sort of work with. I think that what I mo worked mostly with in the solo was just really 
a lot of scale melodies, also just because I didn't check out this sound that much. And then also the triad pair, so there's a little bit of uh, B and B major triad and uh, C augmented triad is in there. Um, and also just exploring how it is to play the E major 7 arpeggio on top of this the C major 7, uh, seven which is also, again, that's then closely related to um, more of the augmented or Messiaen mode type sound, really. Uh, but it has a lot of those characteristics, so it's an interesting uh, sound to check out, maybe, and uh, also something I might uh, come up with as an option in, in other or later videos. Uh, but I need to check it out a bit more first. So the way you want to work on this, if you want to add something, and that's also, as you can tell, like with this last example where I, it's not something that I, I worked on a lot, is that you want to, of course, know the scale that, and be able to play that, but you also need to know all the different structures that are in there, so, so check out uh, uh, diatonic uh, th triads and diatonic seventh chords and get an idea about what, what you can do with that, because as you can tell also when I'm improvising, I'm making use of, of those structures, so I'm, I'm going for the, the triad pairs, the different upper structure triads and upper structure arpeggios, and relate those sounds uh, to the chords I'm playing over, so in this case the C major 7. That's really the approach, also because that's going to tell you what notes you need to play to sort of pull out the sound. You need to identify what the notes are and also what is specific. If a specific group of notes is going to tell you that this is the sound. Um, so you, keep, you need to keep that in mind when you're trying to figure it out because you need to learn how to play melodies that emphasize that. That's how you're going to use the sound and how you can sp draw out that specific color in your solo. And I think also that's the skill, like the skill set that you need to use here is that you want to be able to take any scale and then any sort of arpeggio in there and try and emphasize those notes in the melody that you're playing without just playing the arpeggio but also just playing other notes and, and making music with it. And that's when you really know how to improvise with an arpeggio. Yeah. So that's a few options. Um, I'm not really sure how many. I think there are like seven or eight. Uh, if there's something I left out uh, that you use a lot, then um, let me know in the comments. It's always good to have more options. Uh, and, and of course, there are bound to be stuff that I'd be some things that I didn't cover. So if you have something that, that you think, well, this is really great, uh, then, then leave a comment. Uh, I'm always curious to hear what you guys are using for interesting scale sounds. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar, about interesting scale sounds and arpeggios, then subscribe to my channel. I publish a new lesson every Thursday and I've been doing it for quite some time, so there's already a lot of material available on my channel. If you want to help me keep making all these videos, then check out my Patreon page. I'm very grateful for the support that I get from a small community of people on Patreon, and if you're supporting me there, I can give you something in return for your support. That's about it for this time. There's a new lesson on Thursday. See you then.